they were thinking of moving to Windsor, even before the cost of living crisis. So stop with this obsession with them. No one can help the family that they are born to, be it royalty, celebrity, extremely rich, middle earners, or poor. It is what it is. We have a pandemic that didn't help our situation, now we have the war in Ukraine that doesn't help the situation. Then you have those that don't pay the proper taxes in this country, which by all accounts is legal. Then those companies charge the earth so that they can pay their investors a profit. Why isn't this being discussed and investigated by journalists etc? Why is it that let's put William down because he wants to move house? People move house every day, when are you going to go after those people as well? The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge are escaping the goldfish bowl of Kensington Palace for Adelaide Cottage in Windsor's home park in a bid to put their children first and give them more freedom. But royal commentator Richard Kay claimed the move was a rare misstep by William and Kate amid the cost of living crisis crippling the nation. Writing for the Daily Mail, Mr. Kay said, the less charitable response, however, is that at a time of an exploding cost of living crisis affecting working families up and down the country, securing the use of an additional property looks clumsily insensitive. Certainly, for a couple who have always demonstrated a deft hand in managing the public relations side of their royal life, the fact that they now have three enviable addresses at their disposal is a rare misstep. A couple has an elderly relative. 96 years old with failing health who has recently lost her husband. She needs more support. They also have three children, nine, six, and four who need to be cared for. They both have busy jobs, mostly based in London where their rented offices and accommodation is, as sometimes need to stay overnight for functions. Their family home is in Norfolk, a property they own which was ideal for a family while the husband was working for the air ambulance service as a pilot in the East Anglia area. Demands from the family firm mean he had to give up the job he enjoyed and take on heavy responsibilities and move base to be closer to his family, but they hope they may get back to their home for short breaks and holidays. So they decide to rent a four bedroomed property just a few minutes from their elderly relative and only a short commute to London for work. Their three children can all go to the same school just 20 minutes away and be very close to their maternal grandparents who can step up when mum and dad are busy. The family also has a small holiday cottage in Scotland left to them by great granny in her will. Now, so far, what have they done which is so outrageous? All their rent and expenses are paid for by a member of their family. We all know that it is that steaming pile of camel dung who started this in an attempt to turn the public against William and Catherine before Red Drip and his organ grinder are, in the hope of gaining more attention. Give it up plastic scabies and find another way of attracting mugs to pay £3,000 for three days of word salad washing by your masters. Mr. K admitted William and Kate's new four-bedroom home is positively modest by royal standards. But he highlighted how there are questions over how the move tallied with long-standing plans for a slimmed-down monarchy. Mr. K said, "For the public, expect to see not more homes but fewer. The Cambridges will live at Adelaide Cottage after the Queen gave them permission to lease the four-bedroom Grade Two listed cottage, which belongs to the Crown Estate." They will pay market value rent on the property from their own private funds, not from taxpayers' money via the sovereign grant. Their children Prince George, Princess Charlotte, and Prince Louis will join the co-educational private Lambrook School near Ascot in September. William and Kate will retain Kensington Palace's apartment 1A, which was refurbished with £4.5 million of taxpayers' money in 2013, as their official residence and their working base which will continue to house their office staff. They will also keep their Norfolk country mansion and Mer Hall, which was a gift from the Queen and underwent building work at their own cost. The downsizing of the four-bedroom Berkshire home means William and Kate's full-time nanny Maria Theresa Turian Burallo will live elsewhere for the first time, as will other staff including the housekeeper and the chef.
A royal source said the Cambridges were very conscious of how their move stood in contrast to the cost of living crisis. Asked whether William and Kate were mindful of the economic difficulties facing many who would not be able to afford such opportunities, the source said, They absolutely are. It's something they have thought long and hard about and this is a decision they have not taken lightly. It would have been extremely difficult for them to continue on as senior working royals if they were based in Norfolk. What they have basically done allows them to put the kids first, but also to continue on doing what they do all day, every day. The move means William and Kate will be closer to the Queen, who is mainly based at Windsor Castle. The Cambridges will live at Adelaide Cottage after the Queen gave them permission to lease the four-bedroom grade two listed cottage, which belongs to the Crown Estate. They will pay market value rent on the property from their own private funds, not from taxpayers' money via the sovereign grant. If that isn't clear enough, I suggest you spec savers. The Cambridges are senior members of the RF and serve the Queen and the people of the UK. They have a young family and it makes sense to live closer to the school and at the same time, closer to the Queen and Kate's parents. We will do the same. As for KP, they are using it as their office and certainly would need a place to stay when they are in London to attend functions etc. makes sense. Amber House was given to them as a gift and theirs to keep personal. What they are doing is the same as any other busy businessman who has the means to upkeep all the properties. Whereas Harry and Meghan opted to leave the RF and his duties and to leave the UK and not serve the Queen or its people. Such a big difference. Oh crap, what does this company express do all day, have people sit at desks and make up lies and gossip to get clickbait for money? Express knows darn well that the Cambridges are paying their own way and renting the cottage so that their children can have more freedom to be children without idiots prying into their lives. Neither William nor Catherine own any of the properties that they live in, and all the repairs on the KP were done because they were needed after not being repaired for over 60 years. Things break down people and even people break down. Give it a break here okay? None of us were born in a royal family, we had no choice in that when we were created did we? Just be darn glad it is not Harry and Meghan that are the heirs. Kensington is not only where they lived but the workplace for their staff who handle schedules, appearances, and things they are involved in like Earthshot. It functions as a site for the staff and formal meetings with people or organizations and a home. Kensington is part flats and cottages, part museum and part government offices for the Crown. Adelaide at Windsor does mean the children can go out and play but is it still tied to work? The Queen, and thus PP staff and court, are now located at Windsor. They are now within a few minutes walk of his grandmother, Queen, and it is much easier to coordinate with the BP staff. How can anyone be faulted for moving closer to a 96-year-old grandmother? BTW they pay rent on both. And it is not as if anyone could lease those properties, both are on secure locations, guards, etc., and only a limited number of people can live at either site as they have to meet security requirements, typically members of the family or court staff, hardly places where the council could stick some single mother with five kids on benefits. Anmer is part of Sandringham, owned privately by the Queen. One day the whole thing will be Williams, goes from monarch to new monarch upon the death of the monarch, so what if the Queen gave him a small part of it early as a wedding present? The fourth is a cottage in Scotland left to William by his great-grandmother who bought it herself what? 